Hello guys and welcome. I'm lucky to present this 286 mainboard which is in perfect condition. The battery didn't leak yet at all and I'd like to take a chance to prevent it from future damage. Usually it is enough to just remove the battery by cutting it off the mainboard. However, I always try to replace it by a modern cell battery like CR2032. Unfortunately, it is not always possible, mostly due to a narrow space where usual socket for such a cell battery just don't fit. Anyway, this mainboard has just enough space for the said battery socket, but there is something we have to think of when doing this. First, let's remove the old barrel battery. The barrel batteries are the number one reason for damaged retro hardware. If they leak, what they always tend to do one day, they heavily damage mainboards and if left unseen for a while also plugged in extension cards and even the computer housing. Now let's uh, take a look why we can just insert a cell battery instead of a barrel one. The barrel batteries are rechargeable. They deliver the power to the real-time clock chip and memory to keep BIOS settings when the computer is off. However, when computer is on, the circuits get inverted and the barrel batteries will be charged. Let's turn on the PC and test the current on the battery contacts. As you can see, there is 18 milliamps charging current. If I measure on the header for external battery, there is zero. Let us follow the traces going from the battery. As you can see, it goes up and through the main board to the other side, where it comes out between two diodes. We will take a closer look at them in a second. Further, right behind one diode, the trace goes up to the header for external battery. So this left diode is placed on the trace coming from the power supply and this right one is on the trace coming from the external battery. Both diodes are directed to this middle point, which follows to the barrel battery on the other side of the mainboard. Now, how does that work? Well, let's take a look at the following sketch. Here we have a header for external battery and down here the barrel battery. This trace goes to the circuits like BIOS real-time clock and everything what has to be powered from the battery. Here on the left we have a trace coming from the power supply. It gives us 5 volt and shall power the circuit on and charge the barrel battery obviously. Let's see what happens when the computer is off. So now current comes from the power supply and we'd use an external battery. The current will go from the external battery through the, through the diode D1. It will be blocked by the diode D2 and go directly to the circuits. We assume that the barrel battery would not be installed when using the external battery. You should never use both. Now let's assume that we have no external battery, but only the barrel battery, and the power is still off. The current from the barrel battery would directly go to the circuit blocked by the diode D1 and D2 from going in opposite direction. Now let's see what happens when we turn on the power supply. The current will flow over the diode D2, is then blocked by D1 from going to the external battery, and goes to the circuits as well as to the barrel battery to charge it and this would damage our cell battery once installed here. So to prevent the battery from being charged, we can cut this trace, but then the battery will not be able to do its job. So instead, we can insert an, another diode here. And so when the power supply is on, the current will be blocked by the diode and just go to the circuits as required. And when the power supply is off, the circuits will be powered by the battery. This is a very common modification on all the ancient mainboards with barrel battery. Search for diodes near the barrel battery or the header for extended one and draw the schematics to understand how it works. The way is often similar, but not always the same. Sometimes you have to cut a trace and add a diode like in this case, and sometimes you just have to remove a diode. But remember always to modify the circuits to prevent the battery from charging and damaging the environment or, in worst case, hurting you. I removed the speaker from the board to get a little bit more space to work. I'll put it back later when we are done. Okay, now this is the trace which is coming from the power supply. On the schematics, it is the one going over the diode D2. And here this appendix 
is what is going to the circuits, like real-time clock, etc. In real, on the other side of the mainboard there is another diode, but it's not really important for us now. However, it goes down here between these two solder points. And this is a battery and the trace which goes to it and which we want to cut and replace by a diode. First, let's cut the trace with a knife. Short test for continuity. And as you see, the trace is through. Now the question is, where to put the diode? As you probably can see, there is a solder point for the diode on the other side, which controls the current flow to the real-time clock. I think there is a hole underneath, which I can clean and then use to put the diode into, to connect these two points. Here how it looks from the other side. Okay, I managed to free the solder hole and now I can put the diode. Please pay attention to the polarity if you do it yourself, or the diode will block the wrong direction. Here, how it looks when everything is in place. And the other side. Okay, now let's turn the main board on again and measure the current. First on the trace, which goes to the real-time clock. Here we have our 18 milliamps again, so at least we didn't damage anything here. And on the battery pads, where the barrel battery was once located, we have 0 amps. Means the cell battery, once installed here, will not be charged anymore. Let's put the battery into the holder now and do our real life tests. As you can see, after powering on, the mainboard complains about setting reset due to a dead battery. I'll set up the date and time in the BIOS and clear some default settings. The battery remains in the socket and with removed power supply cables I will leave the battery to cool down for some minutes. Couple of minutes passed and we can turn on the main board back again. As you can see our new battery made the job and all settings remain as they should. All modifications seem to work flawlessly. Very nice. During this video I realized that this main board makes me a little bit afraid. Due to all the latest NSA and observation scandals, did Packard Bell know how prophetic their slogan actually was? Thank you for watching and goodbye.